Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I am very very happy. First of all, I'm not ill like I was in the last video, which is very very pleasant. First of all, and the other thing, not first of all, the other thing is the festival playlist has been fixed finally. Um, apparently, this uh, a lot of hate was going towards Turn Ten and Playground Games, unsurprisingly, about this new uh, feature. Because it was on 100% completion to get a car. 100% completion. That's an unbelievable amount of hours and effort just for one and possibly two cars. Um, I don't understand. I'm just... I'm really, really pleased the fact that it was actually fixed. Because I just can't believe that this actually got past the testing stage. If it ever did go into a testing stage. Um... In the first place, because it was just so flawed. Like at the moment, uh, I'm playing a game called Deus Ex: Human Revolution, and uh, that's a PlayStation 3 game, or Xbox uh, 360, whatever. That's a, an old gen game, and I love that game a lot. Uh, I just decided to start it again, give it another playthrough, just because I enjoy the game, and not play this. I wanted to give this game a break for a while, but I couldn't. I had to jump on every single day at half past two, after half past two. To do a daily challenge. Uh, the daily challenges were the worst. I, I found they were the most, one of the most irritating. Because you couldn't do them on the day that you were free. So let's say I had to actually go on every single day. I had to go on PlayStation 3, play a game. Oh, it's half two. Go on, turn the Xbox on, do the challenge, turn the Xbox off. I'm sure that's not good for the Xbox health uh, doing that. So yeah, uh, that was a really annoying thing. And the thing is that the daily challenge was only one uh, per, was worth only 1% of the total completion. So it was barely worth it. But then you had to do it, otherwise you don't win the Pontiac. So yeah, I am so glad that was fixed. Thank you very much, Playground Games and Turn 10. The only thing you really need to fix now is the bloody car sounds. Now, I know a lot of them don't actually sound that bad, but there are some that are just dreadful. As we mentioned previously, I'm not going to go into a rant about the car sounds again uh, for the minute. Because I want to explain and show you the brand new cars added to the game today. Well, last week. Uh, but become available up to today. Uh, I did film this, make a video of this earlier. But uh, for some reason my Elgato software was being really glitchy. And I'm uh, not sure what the um, the quality of that video was. So I thought, oh, you know what, I'll just start again. So I have viewed the Mustang already. So you won't be like first impressions, reaction sort of thing, unfortunately. But um yeah, so let's just go to the RTR Mustang first. But I haven't driven the um, the Pontiac yet, so I'm looking forward to driving that. As the Pontiac is more my style. As you know, uh, drift cars and that sort of thing aren't my sort of thing. I like production cars. So I can't really um, explain too much about this because I know nothing about it. I don't know if Ken Block drives this or not. I have no bloody clue. It, I have no interest in drift cars whatsoever. So let's open up the boot here, we can see some fans <laughs> and a massive uh, fuel tank. So we've got RTR all over the place. Uh, can we open the bonnet? Get away, I want to open the bonnet. Open the bonnet up. And there's the massive engine. Uh, go on, I guess it's the same 5 litre V8 that was originally in the car. But um, it's been heavily modified I can imagine. So yeah. Massive air filters on the top there. Jumping inside. There we go. So we've got um, nothing to explain about, really, apart from just a bare bones car, really. It's got a hydraulic handbrake and an amazing gear stick. Luckily, he does actually do the animation of changing gear because the gear stick's quite obvious uh, when you're driving around. You can see it quite clearly. And uh, there are some cars in this game where the animations are glitchy. Like, there's some cars where you've got an automatic gearbox, he's changing gear, either with the flappy paddles or with the uh, gear stick. Or we've got a manual car and he doesn't do anything, even, but then the car makes the sound like he's, like he's changing gear. So it's quite, uh, there's a few glitches like that that are quite irritating, so hopefully they'll fix that, because I don't remember anything like that being in Forza of Horizon 3. But, uh, yeah, this game has really sort of taken a downturn for the uh, quality side of things, and, uh, yeah. So I won't rant on about that anyway. So here's the Mustang. I can't really comment on it because I know nothing about it. So unfortunately, I uh, can't really sort of say anything about that. Uh, Customisation-wise, there's no visual customization, Just your yeah, lame arse. Uh, <laughs> internal customization. I'm joking, by the way. Yeah, yeah it's just got your uh, normal 
internal customization, which I think after it's tuned up, is actually one of the most powerful cars in the game. So they are definitely a, a worthwhile purchase. This if uh, it's as good as it's claimed to be. No other color schemes for this, which um, did I just glitch that out? No, nah. <laughs> doesn't let me go really quickly. Uh, I did thought I'd glitched it out then. So no paintwork for it. Uh, there's only mechanical customization, which uh, once it is tuned up, is one of the most powerful cars in the game. So, and that's words from uh, the Turn Ten Playground game uh, employees themselves saying it's like one of the most powerful cars in the game. So, I think it was anyway. And was it? Hmm. I think. It, um. I know it's got over a thousand uh, brake horsepower. Um. Let's have a look. See what it says on the. Uh, Oh, on the stats. Why are you not changing? Ah, there we go. A thousand brake horsepower. There we go. Uh, I'm sure that's probably the most powerful car as standard in the game. Um, well, actually, no, because the, the Bugatti uh, Chiron and the Koenigsegg and that lot will have more horsepower than that. So it's not the most powerful car in the game, but I think if you tune it up, it would be. It'd be approaching that. It's got to be. Uh, quickly have a look at the statistics of the Dodge Viper Formula Drift thing, because that's my favourite drift car, because it's just amazing. It sounds like how a Viper should sound, unlike the other Vipers, because they sound like a lawnmower or something. 1,350, so the Viper has more, but then it has got two cylinders more. I do like the Viper, that's my favourite one, just because it sounds awesome and it's got a big V10. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this is going to give it a drive. I think I've got traction control, stability control off. I think. I'm going to have a double check. I'm just not quite sure. Got a nice idle noise. Uh, settings. Difficulty settings. Off and off. Right. Yeah, quite a pleasant idle noise. Yeah, let's jump into third person. As you can probably tell, I'm not much of a drifter. Not at all. Have I mentioned that before? I'm sure I have. Whoa. I think it's... Is it going to be a little bit easier to control as the Viper? Because the Viper has obviously 350 brake horsepower more than this. And I got 121,000 points with this uh, drift zone in the Viper, so let's see what we can get out of this. Not bad, not bad at all. Considering it's 300 brake horsepower down, that's like near enough an entire Jaguar S Type R or 1990s Jaguar XKR near enough loss it's not too bad loss in power in comparison to Viper so well there. Going back talking about the festival playlist uh, update, it is really good that Turn 10 are actually listening, or Playground Games, are actually paying attention to uh, the community. It's really, like, that's quite interesting to see that they do actually care about you. But of course they know that you are the customer and you're the one who's been playing their games. And if the game is not good enough, you're not going to play it, so they lose out. So, the customer is always... Um, yeah, so the customer is always knows best. It's always right. So, 
the only thing is it's not really doing very well for my customer, right? Because uh, it hasn't got a Jaguar S Type R in this game yet. Uh, it hasn't got the 200 cars that I listed in the video previously. Um, I have a car list that I did. So I still haven't received many of them. Although we have received a few. Uh, I think we received uh, quite a few of them that I've actually... Near enough, all the ones in the festival playlist we got this month uh, were on my 200 car wish list, so I am very pleased about that. Although I'm really, 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 really wanting them to add an S Type R in this game, I have deep, deep faith that they will add it into the game. I know, I know they probably won't, but I love that car a lot. Uh, if I was going to make my second channel, you might understand why I like that car so much. But I don't think my second channel is going to happen uh, talking about Article 13. If you've heard about Article 13, it's an EU regulation, uh, legislation about copyright, protecting copyright holders, which means I won't be up, uh, uploading videos on this channel for very long because my channel will be unavailable for any EU uh, viewers or I might not even be able to upload them at all because I'm in the EU at the moment. So yeah, um, going back into Forza, we are now going to take a look at the Pontiac. GTO. Let's go around here. A 1965 Pontiac GTO. A car that was originally in Forza Horizon 3 as a DLC has now been brought back into Forza Horizon 4 as a DLC. So I don't know why that's happened, but there we go. There's a lot of cars they keep removing and they just keep removing them and adding them again later. The SL, uh, 200, uh, is it 280 SL? That was one of them. The Porsche 9, uh, 914 from last week. Then there's this. Technically, we've only gained the three RTR Mustangs and the BMW Z4. They're the only four new cars, technically, to the Forza series that we've got. All the rest have either been in a previous Forza before. Which is kind of sad in a way, because they shouldn't have removed them in the first place. Uh, the one the good thing about the Z4 is the fact it's a good, easy way to get access to the new Toyota Supra without actually having the Toyota Supra. Anyway, let's just go back onto this car. So we've got the Pontiac here. If we actually take a look at the colours first of all, we can change the colour to my uh, to my choice of colour before we have a look around. You know, the red's actually quite nice. It quite suits it. Uh, suits it very well. Got some very classical but horrible colours around here. I think my last game, it was that colour, which is very, very nice. I do like it in black. That's very nice. Ooh, again, it's a, it's, a, it's a cross between uh, black or blue. Hmm... Yeah, I'd have it in black. Screw it. Oh, wrong choice. I'd have it in black. So, yeah, uh, next week we've only got one brand new car. Uh, so, I think I might even be uploading the video tomorrow. It depends. It might be tomorrow, or I might lay, lay, um, leave it until next Wednesday. But I don't think there'll be any point in that. So, I might just release it tomorrow. So, we're going to have two videos in one week. Uh, but then next week won't be any videos. So, uh, my schedule's going to be a little bit messed up. But what can I do? Really. Uh, right, so let's have a look at the customization side of things. Uh, custom upgrade. Go across here. Visual customization. Front bumpers. So we've got that Forza bumper there. We've got, we've got the back here. We've got the Forza spoiler. And bonnet wise, we've got Forza Ram Air thing. Yeah, we've got some crazy as bonnets on it, which is good to see, though. At least we've got some different bonnet customization. Yeah, so there we go. There's your choices in customization. So it's a bit better than the Mustang, but then I was expecting that. Uh, so if we go now to uh, the Falls of Vista, that's where I wanted to go. And we can take a look at the car. So we've got this lovely chrome engine here with three air filters on top there, which is rather unusual. Normally you have one huge air filter, but it's got three of them. Um, you can see the big ass brake servo over there. We've got the alternator there. Uh, the Batteries at the front, right at the front. That's unusual. Normally they're right, um, right at the back over there. They this sort of the bulkhead. Unless it's normal for American cars, I'm not quite sure. But um, I know a lot of cars in this country, like British cars, have a lot of the batteries in the boot or uh, down near the bulkhead at the back here. So yeah. So there's the engine bay. Let's go around and take a look at the boot. The only thing I don't like about this Forza Vista is the fact that your camera's not really free. You are getting directed all the time, which can be quite annoying, because I'm trying to get to the boot, and then it's directing me into the seats, which is quite annoying at times. That's a ginormous boot. That is, that is brilliant. You'll be able to fit, like, three months' worth of shopping in there. <laughs> uh, let's go into the interior. See, there we go. It's to direct me to the boot when I was heading my way over to the door. 
beautiful wooden steering wheel and dashboard. Got a white gear knob. That's uh, quite unusual. It's like a tennis ball. Tennis ball? Golf ball, I mean. I don't mean tennis ball. Where'd that come from? Uh, yeah, so it's like a golf ball. Uh, you got a brake. Was that meant to say down there? A brake release? Brake release. So I guess it's got the uh, the pull up handbrake like a uh, Ford Ranger does in this country. The 2004 one, anyway, has a, has a handbrake that you pull from down under the dashboard. Yeah, so it's not quite nice in here. It's got a, got a handle over there for the passenger to hang on to. I can imagine they expect this thing to be pretty quick. Right, uh, so that's it for customization. We've done the colours, so let's just go and give it a drive. We'll go around my normal route this time. We'll go to darting around the, uh, the the country roads, which I normally do. We'll stay in third person for the minute. There we go, so there's the engine sound. Mm. Quite generic, I would say. I'm not sure if it's as good as it did in Horizon 3, but there we go. It's not a bad engine, though, either way. I don't know what it is with these American cars in this game. Nearly every single one of them do it. They just over-rev all the time, unless the uh, that little red counter. So I associate, if you see on the rev counter, you see the red uh, sort of needle, red needle. I always change gear at the red needle because I associate that being the red line. But most of the time, a lot of the American cars in this game, even in Horizon 3, they just go straight over it. Let's go back in first person. Apologies, I'm just flicking out the camera views too much. See that? It'll keep going, still going, still going, still going, still going, still going. All the way up to six and a half thousand, but the red line's at five thousand. So that's like an extra thousand and a half revs added on. So I don't know what that's all about. You know, if, if you know about American cars about in real life, and let me know down in the comments whether, um, if you know, if you can, let me know down in the comments whether the red line's like for easy, normal driving, or or is it like a that is actually the red line? The steering's a bit a bit tough. I do like this car. I was really shocked that they actually removed this car uh, from. Her oh, I should have known they were going to do that. I was actually really surprised they removed this car from Horizon uh, 4 when it was from Horizon 3. Especially the fact it was a DLC car as well. The other car I really missed from that game is the uh, Renault Alpine A110, is it? The uh, V6 GTA Renault. I like that car a lot in that game, so it's annoying they removed it from here. Because I've got traction control, which I don't normally do. You know, I drift this thing around quite a lot. Pull the handbrake. Uh -huh. Ah, you sod. Spoiling my drift. I'm in a really high gear as well, it's not like I'm in gear one or anything like that. Ow, bugger you. <laughs> yes, this thing doesn't have much grip with the traction control off. <laughs> Which I'd be surprised if this thing does have traction control in real life. But yeah, there we go. There, the, there are the four new cars we've got. Have I shown you the Falls of Fond shop? I, can't, uh, I don't think I have. Here's the Falls of Fond shop. Uh, so yeah, um... We've got two brand new cars in the Falls of Fond shop this week. We've got the Colorado ZR2, which I'm sure a lot of you are very, very happy about that. My previous video got over 7,000 views. Probably because this car, this Colorado, if I flick over to here, the Colorado, is something that a lot of you lo uh, you guys love and wanted it in this game, but couldn't get it because it was a Falls of Fond uh, shop exclusive 
vehicle and it was only available on week three of the game's release which i think was only the second week of the normal pre, uh, non-pre-order edition um ultimate edition game so when you because i think we were able to get the game a week early with the ultimate edition so it's only the second week of the game's ownership so yeah so that was quite a rare car so glad they brought that back i'm sure it's made a lot of you happy also quite a surprise, we've actually gained the 1958 Aston Martin DBR1 as well on the Volkswagen shop. This car's worth 10 million credits in this game. Uh, I'm quite surprised they've released uh, another car, because normally it's, the full, it's a, fest, um, a Forza edition car, which I'm not really interested in. I don't I sort of just pass that over. But yeah, the um, dbr one's a really interesting car to be added on there. I love that car. I was, I was glad they added it in, because I loved it in Horizon 2 when I played that. So that's really good. Uh, I got mine for about 2 million, uh, 2 million credits from the auction house about two months ago. So um, the market may have changed since then. And it's quite hard to get them for that sort of money. But I would pay the 650 Falls of points for that. As I'm sure doing two or three Falls of Fonds is less effort than getting um, around four to two to 4 million credits. So yeah, there are the two new cars. The, the, the Colorado is a really cool car. I can't say it's particularly quick, though. Um, I don't know whether they've just messed up the class or something in this game, because okay, I've driven that in a race, and for some reason the um, International Scout, uh, uh, that old thing, uh, seemed to be quite quick, and seemed to beat it for some reason. But yeah, I like the Colorado um, and the F-150 uh, in that race. So I, don't, I would imagine those two being one of the quickest in the race, but for some reason it's not, so... I don't know what's going on with the balancing of the classes in this game, but there we go. Uh, quickly before we finish up, I just want to talk about Horizon 5. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be playing that game or not. Now, I know this is going to sound a bit odd, but I was watching a video from Jake X, which is a uh, quite a famous, who is a famous YouTuber-ish, a famous-ish YouTuber. I'm not sure if he's particularly famous, but I, I know he's quite popular. Um... He was saying that Turn 10 Playground Games have a new idea about developing their games with the community in mind. So pretty much what they've done with this game, where they've built a game and said, oh, here's our product, how can we improve it? But they're going to say, how can we build the game from the start? So they say, right, how what would you want to see? What sort of things do you want the game to be like? Blah, blah, blah. Which is really good, so if it was my game, what I would want is a beautiful map, which is pretty much what this map is, it's really, really good. About the same sort of size, I'm not really interested in huge maps. Uh, I like lots of road networks and good roads, so yeah, this map's passed that test. A massive car list. Now, I know this car, this this game's got, uh, at the moment, I think is 465, 465 cars in this game. Um... Like standard cars, non non Forza editions. So that's quite a lot, but there's still 200 cars on my car list that I did the other week um, that need that need to be added into this game. And there's probably still a lot more then as well, because then I'd have Toyota and that lot in this game. I must get something going on with my controller cable. Uh, yeah, but of course Toyota and Lexus are pulled out of games, so they have no choice about that. The other thing I'd want is good car sounds. So I want. The Audi R8 in this game has amazing sound, and the Jaguar E-Type has amazing sound. I want that kind of accuracy with every single car in the game. That would be my perfect Forza. Ultimate car list, so having the Jaguar S-Type R, please. Um, a beautiful, big-ish map. I don't want a huge map. I don't want, like, Test Drive Limited 2 map. That was just maybe a bit overkill. It was brilliant, but I'd say some of it was a bit linear, like it was going in for a forest, but it looked like the exact same sort of thing as a forest that was at the top of the country. Is, but it's like, mm, that was kind of... A bit linear, but a, a big map's also not always brilliant. Like you get, it takes you forever to get to one place to another, which is good and also bad at the same time. But I like a medium-sized map, something like GTA sort of size. Well, maybe twice as big as GTA would be good. Would be good. Uh, the car list, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, car, um, lots of cars, lots and lots of cars. We need tons, but there's no point having tons and tons and tons and tons of cars if you can't actually drive them because they sound crap. Uh, so a good. Very accurate car sounds, especially now with the car industry in complete crisis. Um, us in the UK now, we have to have our cars, or our new cars by 2020, to be limited, like Japan. Um, in Japan, their cars are limited to 112 miles an hour, so they've got like a little GPS limiter on there. 
But these are actually going to be limited to the speed limit you're on. So there'll be a camera that'll track, it'll see a speed sign and it will slow your car down and control it. it was, it's like self-drive, really, but you're limited. Which I can see is a good idea, but then also not at the same time. Because hopefully it knows when you get to a racetrack. So when you get to a racetrack, it turns itself off and you can drive as fast as you want. Otherwise, a track day would be completely pointless. You might just drive on the motorway just to get the same pleasure. So, uh... Yeah, so then that's going to be in complete disarray. Then we've got electrification of cars, which I don't like electric cars. I hate them. I love engines. I love engine sounds. I love the way how the engines are. And I don't like electric cars. So for me, the electrification is not good for me either. So that's why I'm so co uh, concerned that we need accurate car sounds. Uh, so accurate car sounds are very important. We, I, I think to harness what we've got uh, until we either run out of oil or the electrification just takes over. So yeah, that's my three things. That would be my ultimate game. However, I don't think that's everyone's idea. Uh, if they're listening to all what everyone else is saying, there's probably a lot of you that don't want a huge car list. You want customization. Where for me, I'm not that bothered about customization. As you notice from me, I just go, oh, here's a car. Here's, oh, here's what customization do. And then go on to the car itself. I don't actually talk, talk about the customization. Because I'm not that interested. Although if it's there and it's really good, then I may make my own little project cars off here and there. But I like original cars. Like, there's nothing wrong with this Pontiac as we're looking at it now. That is a, an amazing looking thing. There's no reason to put huge bumpers and splitters and massive superchargers on it. Because I like it like that. I like cars, how they come out of the factory. So, for me, the customization is not really relevant. Where I'm sure there's probably about 99.5% of the community want customization. So then, to sacrifice... Or something that has to be sacrificed for the customization so we may lose maybe 25 percent of the car list and that's bad for me because i want a big car list so i feel like for me my perfect forza will never happen or that uh, the next forza will be nothing what i want it to be and i won't be able to play it because i don't want to play it because it's not what I, what I want it to be although i think i'll probably still play it but i think i'll uh, it won't be the same anymore um unless there's a, they add loads of cars anyway, have accurate car sounds, and the map's about the same. Pretty much have this game, but I have changed the map to a, a different map, because obviously it's a different game. Keep the cars that we've got here, but add another 200, 300, 400 cars, and then make the car sounds accurate. That's all they need to do, that'd be make my perfect game, but of course, it's not going to be the same uh, for everyone else. And if 95.5% of the community want customization, then we're probably going to lose cars, we're probably going to lose map size or something. We're going to end up losing something as a trade-off for the customization, Which means that my perfect Forza would be sort of turned around and won't happen. So maybe that I won't be playing Horizon 5, maybe it won't be the sort of game I want to play. The other thing that's going to stop me from playing Horizon 5 is the new Xbox console. I can imagine this is going to be the last Forza that's going to be on the Xbox One, and, uh, and that's it, I just don't think we're going to get another one. The reason for that is the fact that they're going to try and extend the life of this game. They've even said that. And they said, oh, there's no Motorsport 8 this year. It's only just started uh, production now, Motorsport 8. So, um, yeah. So uh, this game is going to be for another two, maybe year, year and a half from now. So, this uh, I can imagine this is going to be the last game we're going to get in on this console. So, on this console. So, the Xbox 2500 would come out and PlayStation 5. I, I made up the Xbox name, by the way. I just I just called it a random number. So I don't know what the new Xbox is going to be called. So it's going to be called something. And it's going to have a diskless drive. So it, it's, I, they're saying, there's speculation, that um, but it's not actually going to have a physical card reader or disc reader. This causes havoc for me yet again. The other day... Um, my laser on my Xbox is passing out. It's not um, not going to live much longer. So, and it's really struggling trying to play games. I put a disc in the um, the other day, and uh, it, well, I put Horizon 4 in, and it really didn't want to play. I pressed on Horizon 4, and it said Connect to Xbox Gold. That completely shocked me. I thought for a moment then that the new update had caused this game to be online only. And that means I would have to get rid of my Xbox and get rid of Forza if it's online only. Because I don't like online only games. I hate that idea because my internet's not the strongest. Every now and again it gives up. It, um, it 
and I can't play a game in that case. If it, multiple times I've been playing along in GTA Online, and then, boom, the servers are gone. No, it's not the servers are gone. My internet's gone. So then I can't play the game. I'm completely locked out. And that the same thing will happen with if we have no disk drive. So, yeah, that's rather irritating. So, but that will cause me not to get the next Xbox. So this might be the last Forza I play. Anyway, I apologise, I've been gibbering on for half an hour now. So, yeah, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully I haven't bored you to death. But, uh, yeah. Next week, uh, the next uh, festival playlist will only be one new car. So I think I'll probably release that video tomorrow. So, and there's only one Drift Mustang that's, that I'm, gonna, uh, I'm definitely going to rant about, definitely. So, uh, yeah, be prepared. Alright then, see ya.